um, the store button actually has four different types of store. Um, we, can, we can filter the store button um, for certain things. And those are um, store active, which is the default, um, which means that only active values in the programmer. So again, red text, red background, only those values will be stored. That is the default um, setting for the store button. Um, we have store all, which will store all of the values for all of the fixtures um, in our show, regardless of what brought those values to their current state. So no matter if they are selected or not, no matter if I have adjusted the, the values for those attributes or not, if I use store all, every single attribute for every single light that I have patched will be stored in their current state. Um, that is also known as a stop or block queue uh, because it does not allow tracking to pass through it. We have essentially put every single parameter we could possibly put into that queue so that if we make any changes in queues previous to that, nothing would track through. And that's often used at the end of a song. Um, if you were to do like a set list, all is one queue list. Um, at the end of one song, you might put a block queue just to um, keep things from tracking through the next song uh, if you make changes. Um, so that is what that is used for generally. We have store all for selected. So that's gonna be just like store all, except for it's only going to do that for the lights you have selected. So say I had my quantum wash, uh, quantum profiles selected and I use store all for selected, it would store all of the parameter values in their current state for the quantum profiles only. Um, so we could use that to block certain fixture numbers from tracking through. Uh, the last one is store active for selected. So that would only store the active values for the currently selected fixtures, um, which would be a little bit different than what we just did before. Um, normally, if we are using store active, it's going to take all the active values in the programmer. This would filter that down to just the lights I had selected. It would only be the active values for the lights I had selected. Anything else it would ignore, whether it's active or not. All right, um, to get to those different modes of store, you're simply gonna hold down the store button. So if I click here on store and hold it down, after a couple seconds, I'm gonna throw it up here so you can see it better. This uh, red box window is gonna open up. This is our store options window. And here at the bottom left, we see these are the um, different modes we talked about for store. So store active is default. We had all for selected, we have all, and we had uh, active for selected. Um, look, we're not really gonna go over that. It's not often used. So that's how we would change this um, if we were trying to store in a different mode. All right, so we're just gonna look at that a little bit real quick. We'll close the store window and go ahead and I'm just gonna hit clear three times. So again, we're gonna change pages onto a blank page. So we're gonna go page four, please, to take us to fader page four over here and button page four. All right, we're gonna select our quantum profiles mask to mask for those. We're gonna select that group, quantum profiles group. We will set the dimmer value to full. And I wanna position these in the downstage center preset. So we'll come up here to our preset one view, downstage center. Okay, we're gonna press, just press store, don't hold it down. And store this to um, uh, fader one, sorry. Okay, and we wanna name that sequence DSC for downstage center. So we'll come up here to our sequence pool, which is the easiest way to name things. Um, again, I need to locate which sequence this is. So if you've forgotten that, if I make this a little bit bigger, um, if I look in the cell for the sequence here, top left corner is the, again, the executor number. So we're on fader one. The number in the top right corner is the sequence 
uh, pool number. So I would know it is cell number five here. That's the one that's assigned there. So I'm gonna click on that and name it DSC. All right, let's press clear three times. We're gonna select our quantum profiles group again. We're gonna set the dimmer to full. And this time we're gonna mix the color to red. So we're gonna take green and blue to zero. So I have dimmer values and color mix values active now. And the first executor that we stored, this first sequence here, we only stored dimmer value and position value. So I'm gonna go ahead and store this. Um, and this time, mm, oh, we're just gonna hit store again and select the second fader here. Uh, and we wanna name this sequence red. Again, notice that once I store this, all those values become uh, inactive. They're still being held in the programmer. All right, so we'll select that one. Also very important, I just wanna point this out. I clicked that sequence um, in the sequence pool to name it, and it automatically um, activated all the values contained in that sequence. So just know that if you're clicking on anything in the sequence pool, it's gonna load it in the programmer as active. So be careful with that. All right, this one we're gonna name red. And clear three times. All right, so for those two sequences, we use the default store option, which is to um, uh, store active. So that may, means we only stored the active values that were in the programmer. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on fader one. And we'll see, we have up here in the fixture sheet, we have um, yellow with blue background for um, dimmer and pan and tilt. That means that it is being played back, uh, it's being controlled by the playback side. So if you see yellow values in here, um, and sometimes purple and teal, that means that this value is being um, controlled by the playback or an executor instead of the programmer. So just notice that difference. Um, we're also going to um, see that um, we're gonna turn off, downstates the, the first fader, turn on the second one, and we'll see that, yes, we have our yellow indications for the values for dimmer and mix color, because that's what we stored in there. Um, now with executor two still on, go ahead and turn on um, executor one again. And what we notice is that um, they're still at full. They went to the downstage center position and they mixed in yellow. In the fixture sheet, I can see that I have combined both of those sequences now and they're both being played back. Um, since there's no pan and tilt values in the, uh, for the fixtures in the red sequence, um, the position values for the downstage center sequence are still being played back. And same thing with the color, because there's no color information in the downstage center sequence, um, the red color values from the red sequence that we named are tracking through. So we can play multiple playbacks together. And as long as the values are not conflicting, um, they will both play back together. They'll track through each other, okay? Um, if I was to say have had a, a color value of green in this downstage center executor as well, and I played back this red sequence first, and then I played back the downstage center. This is not in the tutorial. I just want you to go through this uh, because it's very important about tracking and priorities. Um, once I play this back, this will, fader one would have been the second one that I played back. Um, and you see up here in the top, it's, maybe it's hard to see, but uh, in the top here, between the two numbers we've talked about, we see an LT. That is referring to that this 
uh, executor or sequence is an LTP sequence. Uh, LTP stands for latest takes precedence. So whichever the latest change, if I have conflicting values, so I would have had red trying to be controlled from this one and green trying to be uh, the control on this one. Since I pressed fader one second, green would take the priority because it is in a latest takes precedence mode. Um, there's another mode you can use that is HTP, which is highest takes precedence. So the highest value would be asserted. Uh, LTP is the default and the norm. Um, so that the latest change will take precedence if there's a conflict. Okay, I just wanted to go over that real quick. Um, if there is no conflict, again, they're gonna track through each other and just combine together. All right, we're gonna turn off both of those executors now and make sure we have cleared three times. Um, now we're gonna select our front of house profiles. So group number, what is that? 33 down there. We're gonna set the dimmer value to full. We're gonna put these in the downstage left uh, preset. So back to your preset one view. Click on downstage left. And now we're gonna use a different store mode for this. We're gonna press and hold the store button down to open up our store options. This time we're going to select um, the all for selected option down here in the use selection area. So click on all for selected. What that's gonna do is even though in the fixture sheet over here, my only active values are dimmer and pan and tilt for 501 and 502, they are still selected with the yellow. When I go to store this, it's gonna grab the state of all of the attributes for those two lights and store that even though they're not active right now, they're off. Um, it's gonna store those. So we're gonna go ahead and select fader three now to store that. Um, you'll notice in the fixture sheet now that um, all of the attributes for those two lights have been loaded in the programmer and are now inactive because I stored them. Uh, we wanna go ahead and name this sequence and we're gonna name this one um, Quantum Profiles Guitar. So this is gonna be this one. Again, you notice that um, the sequences fill in the next available slot. So Quantum Profiles Guitar. All right, we're gonna go ahead and clear that three times to turn everything off from the programmer. Now we're gonna play that back and see what actually happened. So we'll turn on executor number three, fader number three here. And look at the fixture sheet and I have yellow text for all of the values for 501 and 502. So since we selected um, all for selected, um, or all for, yeah, all for selected in the store options, it took all the value states for every attribute for those lights since they were selected and stored that. All right, so we're gonna turn that executor off now. Uh, we're gonna select the none mask now just to get rid of our masks. We're gonna select the Aura XB group, uh, Aura XB main group, so group number um, 12, yeah. We will set the dimmer value to full. Uh, on our macro pool here, beside our groups, we're going to select the odd button to select just the odd fixtures, which will give us the point, um, yeah every other um, from the odd numbers. Um, we're gonna position these odd ones in the downstage center preset. So go back to your preset one view and select downstage center. 
and we want to uh, mix those to a yellow color. So we will take blue in the color tab to zero and leave red and green at full. Okay, now um, look in your fixture sheet. Uh, if the fixture number and the name are bold in yellow, that means they're selected. If they are um, not bold in yellow, that means they were a part of your original selection, um, but we made a change. So since we hit the odd, it selected only the odd of the selection we had. These are still there. So if we just come back over here and want to grab those back, um, we would hit the even macro now. And we see we've reversed that. So now I have the odd fixtures and these are still technically selected, but not going to take commands from you right now. All right, we want to put these even ones in the downstage left um, position preset. And we're going to mix these to green. So we're going to take blue to zero and red to zero, leaving green at full. All right, and, and just so you uh, know this, this is also not in the tutorial, but um, just for your information. Uh, well, we, we talked about these are still technically selected, but not uh, listening to me right now. If I want to bring back the full selection of what I had, uh, if I come down here and hit the set button, just like when we were dealing with highlight where we were hitting next and previous, we hit set to bring back the full selection. Um, we hit set here and it will bring back all the point ones, which is what we originally had selected. Okay. It's a little bit confusing, I know, but um, they're selected, but not selected. It's weird. All right, um, we're gonna press and hold the store button this time. We are going to choose uh, the all selection here for, for use selection or store mode. And what that is gonna do is it is gonna no matter what I have in the program over, over here. So I have, you know, the point ones on the aura selected um, with the dimmer position uh, and mixed color uh, values is active and where I place them. Um, I select it all over here and it's gonna create again, like the block queue or a stop queue. It's gonna take every single value state for every fixture, not just those, every single fixture and every single attribute, and it's gonna take their current state and store that. So let's go ahead and select fader number four. We will notice in our fixture sheet, now we have basically loaded every single attribute for every light into the programmer. These FTs down here, those aren't actually fixtures, those are um, just things within the, the software code that display here. But for every fixture and every attribute, we have now loaded that in the programmer. They're inactive now because we stored them. Um, let's go ahead and name that sequence. So we're going to come back to our sequence pool, select that. Um, and we're going to name this gr slash yel for green and yellow. Try to get these names correct because these are, I know, on the second test out part as, as this actual um, font wording. Okay, we'll hit clear three times. We're gonna turn on executor four here and we will see I have yellow values for every attribute and every light. And those are being played back from the playback side. So that's a block queue.